Mid Pugna. Very volatile hero, I must say. I'm glad they have it on their most established veteran player in Forsaken Oracle. How is, is he the most established? This is only his second pro game, isn't it? Well, that's how Arkosh works. Oh, okay. The newest player is always the most established. Oh, that makes zero sense. As does most of his team. Excellent. I do know that we were in the back room talking to Tgov, not an Arkosh fan, by the way. And he was saying that they should watch out for Divai Lama on that timber saw. Do you agree with that? What was his reason? I don't remember because I don't listen to people who don't like Arkosh. That is a good that is a good way to judge that. This is a decent timber game in some aspects. It depends a lot on this Pugna Grim getting shut down. They're mainly the damage to deal with him. It was mainly in response to Spherion, and it's unlikely he'll be laning versus Spherion, so we'll see how good his laning phase is, but he could pop off. Timbersaw is one of those heroes you usually end up 17-0 and zero or 0-17. Zero and 17. <laughs> You always hope that uh, you don't go the 0-17, and 17, though. Yeah, I don't think I've seen that, but, you know. Anything is possible. <laughs> it's an Arkosh game. Of course, this time, though, it is Wildcard, of course, playing it, so perhaps having a little bit better luck. Maybe just a touch. So what do you think we're going to see throughout this match? What's the plan here for Arakash? Run at them. <laughs> for lack of any strategic <laughs> planning or lack of scrims or anything resembling a strategy, their heroes want to run at wildcard, force the early towers, force the early aggression, sync up this Grimstroke Pugna with their really nice spell combinations, get this gyro snowballing, get this Furion to take the early towers, their heroes do not want to just go ultra late versus Sven Storm Timber with a Bane Grip somewhere behind with not a lot of ways to cancel it. It's going to be really sad for them. So, name of the game is early aggression. Dominate the lanes as much as you can and transition it into early towers and early ganks. You make it sound so simple, and I know for a fact that they, that even with the simplest plan, sometimes these guys struggle very, very hard. Sometimes the simplest things are the hardest to execute because you assume they're easy and you make a lot of assumptions in terms of how you're going to get there, but it doesn't always pan out, right? That's so. very true. Very true. And it's like the unlikely pairing of Pale Horse and, and Gremlo. They can't stand each other, and uh, yet they are forced in their own sort of purgatory to be constantly stuck with each other throughout the laning phase. Yeah, I mean, even there, Gremlo takes a range creep. You know Paler Horse is just flaming him in the comms. Unacceptable. Oh, absolutely. And he's going to demand that he get spoon-fed regen throughout this entire time, this entire laning phase. Yep. Grimlo flying out of Windlace, so he's already in for a world of pain, I'm sure. And the, the comms <laughs> afterwards, that should be double salve. If you were Pale Horse, would you be very upset right now? Mm, I'm a generous carry. I have the support perspective, so I give leniency, you know. You do show mercy. Something that Arkosh does not possess. It's definitely an Arkosh draft, though. I must say. It fits their, their style, fits their tempo. Of just running at the enemy? <laughs> yeah. Turn your brain off in five-man. Some good old caveman Dota, so uh, to say. Yeah, but that implies that you had a brain on in the first place. Oh, there's always something cooking. I just feel like sometimes it's just a hamster on a wheel for some of them. Seems like you know more about them than I do. I've only been in interaction with their content creation team, so. I delve into the lore. Do you know that Gremlo does not have thumbs, but he wears a prosthetic thumb because he feels very bad about it? So you're bringing that up on stream is just going to make him more self-conscious? No, I want him to love himself for who he is, that he doesn't need that prosthetic. Well, it doesn't seem like it's affecting his gameplay. It still seems just as, as subpar as it normally is. Uh, I guess we'll find out. Maybe it does affect his gameplay. Oh Maybe. He gets the courier snipe. His inventory is looking a little weird. Double fairy fire wind lace, but we'll see how it pans out. Could you play Dota without your thumbs? It'd be difficult. I'm sure I could get used to it. <laughs> In my current form, no, but <laughs> maybe with prosthetics. It's possible. It could be super advanced prosthetics. You get like a robot thumb? Yeah, exactly. I can see that. You seem like a guy to have a robot thumb. 
All right, well, this uh, this middle lane is going very much in favor of Esk. 35 and 3 on the Storm Spirit. And uh, as for Forsaken Oracle, he is a little bit Forsaken. He's sitting at 16 and 1. Yeah, I've heard from mid players over the years that you can dominate almost any Storm matchup, bar his super bad ones, um, if you play it really well. S Static Remnant is just an unbelievable laning spell in general. You can always get super high net worth with this hero. So I'm never surprised when I see Storms pulling ahead, but I, I'm not sure this is that bad of a matchup for Pugna in terms of what he should be able to get out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, might just be a little bit of an outplay in this lane, but it's not the worst. Pugna doesn't need some crazy good net worth start. He just needs levels. Just get the levels, get, get you know, some early Aether or Mana Boots. Start hitting the towers, syncing up with your supports. We do see that uh, they did force out the teleport over into the mid lane. Alex making his way over to protect Esk, believing that possibly, you know, they're going to end up clashing with that Spirit Breaker. But again, Spirit Breaker just going to back away. And my question now is, do they try to make something happen? Do they try to slow down Forsaken Oracle? As I say this, as Esk zips it into an arrow. Okay, that answers my question. X getting the first blood against Forsaken Oracle. And Gremlo, ooh, he's a little late again. Is he? Maybe he's just here for the cleanup crew, you know? Get that sweet solo XP. For Forsaken Oracle, I'm not going to save you anyway, so I'll just take your XP while you're gone. And you can bottle me when you come back in, you know? Ooh, that yeah. always feels nice. That is nice when you get bottle service as a support. I don't think he's going to do it, though. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Maybe he's uh, antagonistic towards his own teammate, but... Six-minute rune coming soon. I think both teams should heavily contest this. These early power runes for Storm, super big. They have decent rune contest, too. As long as someone doesn't get arrowed. That is the problem, but they do have the life drain, so that'll be a kill for Gremlo. He is a greedy, greedy player, of course. Sammy, though, in a great position. We'll be able to get a nice little courier snipe on Crow's courier. He's gonna give a couple love taps on his way through. The double damage, though, on Gremlo. Go right forward. Nice stroke of fate. They had the silence over on Sammy. Going to just take a little bit of nap. We've worked hard, Gremlo, but going to follow up, chasing after Sammy. But while this is going on, they have the arrow combination yet again over onto Forsaken Oracle. And there's not a lot that they can do to try to save him. Monkey joining back in there with the teleport. A lot of tree damage going on over onto S. This is a wild middle lane here, SVG. Yeah, Pugna's not coming out great, but I guess his supports <laughs> are pretty happy. Timbersaw gets free reign, but there's not much they can do to interact with him up here, so you'd rather contest these mid skirmishes. Huge committal by them, but I guess Grimlo comes out on top. He gets the big DD, gets like one and a half kills, so he's pretty happy. It's good to make your supports happy. It is. It really is. Sometimes it means you lose, but at least they're happy. <laughs> Have you ever been the reason that you've, uh, you've lost a pub because someone's trying to make you happy, sir? Nobody ever tries to make me happy. I'm so, so sorry. I probably do well on Arkosh. <laughs> Don't let them hear you. <laughs> They'll just show up one day at night and just kidnap you and make you join the team like they did to AUI. No, they can't force me to play. I value my career too much. Are you saying that AUI didn't? <laughs> I'm saying, you know, there's a, there's a reason AUI left or got kicked. Whichever they're going to say it was. Depends on the story and who's telling it, right? But I think he's, do he's in a much better place, so... Make it sound like he's dead. But no, he is, he is. He's working with Tundra, of course. And the Tundra boys seem very happy to have him, so. Seeing another charge over onto the mid lane. Monkey putting a little bit of harassment. This is interesting to me. As Crow, no breaks on this train. My goodness, he has got to be very careful because the arrow, again, connecting beautifully here. Get the Decrapify off. That Starstorm almost finishing the job. The Vi Lama joining back in. Crow trying to break the He's not going to be able to do it. As Eve's joining into the fight, they're going to clean up these trees, but they've already lost their tower. Oh, Sammy was looking to make something happen here. Oracle's going to take a little bit of a nap. Monkey going to trade off here. They want this kill, though, over on Forsaken Oracle. They are going to find it, and they're still chasing after Monkey. They have the vision, throwing down the trees. I don't believe they can do anything more, but they will be able to kill Gremlo. Send him back to his dimension. Game's looking rough. <laughs> Yeah, I, I usually don't call super early GG's, but Arkosh is going to have to summon some uh, huge momentum swing in this game. Because if you're losing the early game engagements with their lineup around these towers, it bodes quite ill. 
Definitely doesn't feel good, especially when you have this timber saw that really has not been forced out. Oracle's gonna try to get the live train off, but he's got a timber chain. They just don't possess the lockdown right now to be able to eliminate this timber saw. Yeah, they need to get this Fury on Orchid online. That is their best tool to be able to swing some of these engagements. Abuse the early silence, especially on Decrep targets. Abuse the Decrep Phantom and Braze combo. Back up the cow when he charges in. Try and not overextend like they did mid too much, you know. You can get some kills, swing it back a little bit before the storm becomes too much of an issue. And Esk is an absolutely fabulous Storm Spirit player. Definitely known for that. They'll put a little bit of silence, though, over on Sammy Boy to crept five with the life drain. And that Nature's Wrath. A choo-choo coming in hot. Here comes Crow. Soft some nice hits here. No bashes, though, yet. But one little boop coming out from Forsaken Oracle will ensure that Sammy Boy is no longer here. He's been banished. Ooh, ooh, that was very peculiar looking. They get silence off. Monkey being chased around in the trees by Eves. Like he's gonna be able to survive it. That was just unlucky, I think. I think there is a window where his chain gets stopped if his movement gets displaced. I could just be terribly wrong on that, but um, yeah, that's unfortunate. Also, that the the Phantom's Embrace Slash wasn't there in time. That's their biggest spell in terms of interaction with his Timber Saw. You get the Embrace on him plus the Decrep. If his Chakram's ever out, he's just stuck there in silence for the full duration. He can die pretty easily this game. They have a lot of early magic damage. Pugna's extremely good at bursting that hero. So, name of the game is keep going with your Pugna. Make sure he can try and find some of these kills, because that's your way to regain the momentum in this game. I am a little bit surprised. Like, well, usually when I see a Pugna in the mid lane, I'm thinking this is going to be the guy who takes down the mid tower. And the mid tower did go down fairly quickly. But of course, it was Monkey making that rotation with the trees. So how does this Pugna get activated? I mean, he needs mana. <laughs> That's one thing. He's, he's going to pick up the Arcane Boots and... Oh yeah, he's, he's rushing the Aether. He has one. So they're going to take they're going to try and take his bottom fight. The main way he gets activated is if Wildcard chooses to engage them, basically. Because Wildcard is a choice. They can kind of just dodge on the map and play the Timber Saw in their enemy jungle, play the Sven at their triangle, like they're doing now. And it's only if they choose to engage in these open areas that this Pugna can kind of get his way back, because he really wants to fight. He needs kills, he needs to find stuff on the map. It looks like maybe he'll get this kill here. Yep. Nice pick off. Narakash will start taking over this bottom area of the jungle. They've opened up the map by taking the bottom tier one. So, wild card. They can decide what they want to do. Okay, pull back over onto Crow. The nice soul bite, though, coming out from Gremlo, but there's nothing else to really follow up. Oh, never mind. There's going to be the call down. Hail Horse getting into position. They got the double suck for half a second there. Not going to be enough as Esk easily dodges away from the missile. And just like that, it's over. That could have been really good if Spearbreaker charged in. He charged top instead, so they missed the swell. <laughs> but that's where I feel like when you play these lineups. You just gotta go all in, you know. Mm -hmm. Don't don't be afraid of dying. Just you find some people, just go on them, because you're you gotta start swinging these early kills in your favor. It looks like they're hunting now for this timber saw, but he's already realized that there was a rotation. They've got some nice wards in the river to keep tabs on this, so the Vailama will be able to very serenely just timber chain out to safety. Smoke play coming out from Wild Card. Yeah, probably looking for this gyro on the triangle. It's a nice little two-man smoke, too. They can swing bottom if they think the Furion's there, but their biggest priority is this gyro. This is pretty close to the tier one mid, though. Yeah, look at Sammy. He wants this, but he's going to behave. He's going to wait patiently. Find the angle. Eves is here. Let's open up with a nice storm hammer. The drag back into the arrow. And they do have that ink swell, but it's not going to be able to save them as there's a lot of damage coming out from Eves right now. They managed to take down Sammy. And they'll go throw the tree up, trying to ensure that the Sven cannot hit, but they'll break him free. A little bit of the suck coming out here again from Forsaken Oracle. As Arkosh just <laughs> trying to get their hands on anybody else, but they've already vacated the premises. Yeah, again, they just need to sync their spells up a little bit and they'll be able to convert on some of those kills. Uh, they were also 10 seconds or so off the Soulbind, and Soulbind's a huge part of their early team fight in terms of getting the double Pugna spells off, you know, the double silence. 
double missile if it hits, I think. But right, well, that one's gonna, pretty rare. They're going to try to go in on Dubai Llama. Crow needing to be a bit careful here. He's sitting a little bit low. They've got the silence. They've got the ink spell. The arrow, though, coming in from Alex. Beautifully done. Look at the soul bind. It doesn't really do a whole heck of a lot of them. A bit slow. And uh, they will eventually, though, take down the timber. Uh, the arrow's just a free trip to base, you know. He tanked it for the boys. Now they don't have to worry about it. One may argue that he wanted to die there. <laughs> maybe so. <laughs> maybe, maybe Forsaken Oracle told him to tank it as punishment. Is he allowed to do that? I don't know. I don't know. What is this a team allowed to do or not allowed to do? This is a really good question because I don't think anyone quite knows. Only Slacks knows. Only Slacks, that mastermind. But this is the window. The uh, the Orchid on Furion can really counterplay this storm. So this is where they, they need to get some extraction out of the map, so to say. S finds himself a pale horse. And Eves is here, so Pale Horse is going to be riding out on a Pale Horse as Death came to his front door. Nice sleep on the Pugna on the side. Make sure he can't get there to save his friend. Sammy's hunting. They found the Marana. Look at the disarm. Follow up with the Ink Swell. It should be a dead Alex. And now the hunt is on. Sammy and the Fire are here. They have the Fiend Script, though. They should be able to take down Forsaken Oracle. He's over on the back lines. Sit forward. He'll be able to take down Monkey. Now Defy, just cutting through the trees, cuts down Gremolo. And the rest of the side of Arkosh, there's only really one still alive after that skirmish. The Gyro just respawning, they're just gonna back off. Yeah, that's a tough fight to take. Unless they can really focus targets super well. I mean, again, this Pugna needs to stay alive in order for them to win fights. He's just way too much of the early game damage. He doesn't even have Pugna Ward yet which is also Oof. one of their best tools of dealing with his Timbersaw in the early engagements, but Sven just gets a free fight on the back line, God Strength, he's going to clean them all up. If Pugna's dead, there's really no counterplay. Zephyr from Ask, he's found Pale Horse, Sammy getting to this in here, it's a lot of damage, the call down comes up the soul bind though, they'll get off the silence onto both, Pale Horse will fall, and they'll find the kill on Sammy and Ask, the follow-up though, Eves is here, he wants to kill Gremlo, he should be able to get it, and now Crow, he's left alone, he's getting the bash off, can he finish off over onto Alex, it's so close, no, Alex will survive. Furion just didn't want to go to that fight or what? <laughs> I guess he was considering it at the end, or... Didn't come in in time, though. Again, you're gonna play this run at Udota. You gotta connect up all five heroes. They really need everybody in these fights. In fact, I feel like Wildcard's almost bringing more heroes to these early engagements than Arkosh is, which is a little surprising, because... Pugna's not gonna keep up in this game at this rate. He played kind of sacrificial in the early engagements, so... He needs his boys to help him pick up the slack, so to say. I don't think it was his idea to play sacrificial, though. Probably I not. <laughs> Some bad luck happened to uh, Forsaken Oracle. You'd think he would have seen that coming. Yeah, that's the way of the Pugna. Sometimes you crush a game in 20 minutes, and sometimes you, you end up blasting core net worth. <laughs> Dust gets used. They get the jump off. Forsaken Oracle is the first one to die. As now Crow gets chased down. There's the nightmare on him. Just going to give him a little boop here. Ask will clean up. Straight into the Roche Pit. In they go. There's not a whole heck of a lot that Arkosh can do. No, they have no AoE control outside of, I guess, a gyro ulti for the slow. So these types of uh, clumped engagements, not that advantageous for them. I guess they have Ink Swell. <laughs> Though I don't know if anybody's <laughs> running in and surviving long enough with Ink Swell on them to actually pop it. I mean, it's a good initiation tool, right? You have the uh, the Spirit Breaker, you know, charge in. You've got the Ink Swell on him, so you've got that. But the follow-up, like you said, a little bit lacking here. Yeah, I guess you can you can swell the Breaker in and then you can decrep him so Sven and Storm don't <laughs> insta-kill him. Then you get your Ink Swell. Maybe that's the uh, synergy play here. They just have to get it to line up is the problem. Bottom tower. Yes, and they have to do it twice versus Storm now. <laughs> it's also a Yules, which... Very nice item for Spear Breaker and Grim and Pugna. Oh, the jump forward over on to Monkey. They'll go for the disarm, follow up with a charge, life drain, but 
Not quite enough here as Eve's getting into the fight. Pops out the Storm Hammer. Again, the Duke Rapper 5 buys a bit more time, but it's only buying time. Monkey just clinging over to the left side. Just please, he begs, please. He's trying to try to teleport out. I don't believe he makes it out, though. Not with all these heroes here. And this is looking like a very dead Pugna. Eventually, Sammy gets himself a double kill. They do find the Vilama, though. They've got a lot of damage to pop out on him, but they don't have the lockdown like we talked about. So looks like this Timber going to survive the arrow right on the tail end over onto the Gyrocopter's booty. The tips come out. And down goes Gyro. Soulbind does slow them down a little bit. They have the silence. The Vilama over here paying attention to Crow. So the Nightmare gets used over on Gremlo. And it's a double kill now as Divai Lama gets the final hit on Crow. Yeah, that, that is not a good fight for Arakash, <laughs> to say the least. One thing I'm not sure what actually happened was there was a random essence ring on the ground at some point. Whose essence ring was this, and where did it come from? That is the question. Can we see? It just yeah. drops. You can't even really see it in the did, replay. Did somebody clean it up like as they zip through? Because sometimes... No? I actually have no idea where it came from. I, the only thing I can wonder is like maybe Esk zipped through or something to to cause it to get tossed to him. I mean, sometimes like someone shovels a creep and then the little mini creep that spawns dies and it can spawn a neutral item, but there's no neutral creeps there. It's truly some black magic. Yeah, I mean, maybe Arkosh is just so many neutral summon, items out of the ground. <laughs> maybe he offered it up as a peace offering, you know? That could be. I mean, it's NA Dota too. Someone could have just dropped it on the ground. <laughs> That's also possible. <laughs> there are some notorious item droppers on Arkosh, I've mm. been told. I won't name names, but... That's part of the lore. The Wrath of Nature is what our observer is circling around, so I'm wondering if perhaps it was a Wrath of Nature that popped on a creep camp. But the zip forward again here, coming out from Eskremlo was an easy little target. They'll follow up. They'll just absolutely blow Crow up. Oh, my word. Wild card came ready to play. Yeah, they're showing no mercy. So they're, yeah, so they're showing that the Essence Ring is uh, over on oh, the side Oh, it is Dyer's. Yes. Why was it there, though? I think it was a Wrath of Nature that... Yeah, but does, that still spawns it on the creep that it kills. I thought they, they transferred over to where you are now. It doesn't. I guess that's why I'm retired again, so. <laughs> Fiends grip. They just ignore Pale Horse. They want Forsaken the Oracle because they know they can go right back in and give the chop out. Or in this case, you know, the zip. And they, they've had GG. enough on Arkosh. They call GG. Sven just took over the game. <laughs> please uh, please an analyze.